Okay, so I'm going to walk through the answers to this study guide. So if you're having trouble, you can watch this video and follow along, and that way you'll have an idea of what's expected for the quiz next time I see you. So we have Adrian here at the Speedy Clean Laundromat. The washing machine uses $1.25 per load of laundry. He starts with $20 in his pocket. He also purchased detergent for $5. How many loads of laundry can Adrian wash if he can spend at most $20? So notice that this one says inequality here. Okay, so make sure you're paying really close attention to what's being asked um, for you to do between an inequality or an equation. So we have to define a variable and write an inequality that will determine how many loads of laundry he can wash. So that tells us right there that our variable is going to be loads of laundry, right? And we know that it costs $1.25 per load of laundry plus the $5 he spent on detergent, and it has to be at most $20. That's what he has. So less than or equal to is at most, another way of saying at most, right? So let's go ahead and scoot down here and solve this. I'm going to draw my wall of equality. Divide by 125, divide by 125. I believe you get x is less than or equal to 12. Let me double check on my calculator. I don't want to lead you guys astray. 20 divided by 1, or excuse me, 15 divided by 1.25 is 12. So I have my answer, then I have to go down here to complete sentence. What does that actually mean? This means that Adrian can do 12 loads of laundry. with the $20 that he has. Okay, so there's my answer. Right? So I identified the variable, created the inequality, solved it, and then interpreted what this 12 stood for. What does it mean in the context of the story? Okay, let's go on to question two. We've got Marionette. She needs to rent a moving truck. She's got two companies that have different um, pricing. So how many days would she have to rent the moving truck from each company in order for the cost to be the same? So to find a variable, find the number of days that makes the cost of moving the renting truck the same. So X is going to be the number of days, right? And we want them to be the same. So this is where we set up a company A situation and a company B situation. Okay, for company A, we know it's $40 per day, so that's going to be 40x. And for company B, we know it's $60 plus $20 a day, so less per day, but there's a $60 upfront fee. So both of them have advantages, kind of like the people working at the different car washes or the different movie stores that you might rent videos. So let's go ahead and solve this. 40x equals 60 plus 20x. I'm going to draw my wall of equality. I'm going to subtract 20x from both sides because it has to cross to get all the variables on one side. Oops, I'm going to put my x there. I'm going to put my x there, get rid of those. So now I have 20x equals 60. Divide both sides by 20. x equals 3. So down here for my complete sentence answer, what does that three represent? Well, if I go back to the situation, you're asking me how many days would she have to rent a moving truck from each company in order for the cost to be the same? So if she rents a moving truck for three days, the cost would be the same. Okay, so when we think about that kind of abstractly, after three days, if she's going to rent for more than three days, which company is probably going to be our most, uh, the best deal, right? Well, 
after three days, it costs the same. So then all of a sudden it's paying $20 versus $40 a day. Let me fix this. This should say four zero. Right? So some of you might be able to take that logic and go down here and say, well, if she needs it for 10 days, of course I'm going to use company B because now I'm only charged $20 each day for seven days instead of $40 each day for seven days. Some of us aren't ready to use that logic yet. So what we can do instead is actually figure out how much it will cost for 10 days. So for company A, we know it's $40 per day. So if I'm going to do for 10 days, I'm going to put 10 in where the X was. That's going to be $400 from company A. From company B, I know it's $60 plus $20 per day. So I'm going to do 60 plus 20 times 10. So that's going to give me $260 total. So clearly, company B is going to be the best choice for me if I'm going to rent a moving truck for 10 days. Right now, if I'm going to rent a movie, moving truck for two days, I'm going to want to go with company A because at three days, all of a sudden, it's the same. Um, you've already cost the same amount. But So here, my answer would be she should rent from company B because it would be $140 cheaper. Right? It's going to cost her quite a few less dollars to go with company B if she's going to rent it for 10 days. Okay. So there is example. That's question two. Let's move on to question three now, which I'm pretty sure we've, we started this out in all three classes, right? Um, our X is how many drinks they purchased. We know Chloe has $80 on her card minus $4 per drink. And Alia has $100 on her card minus $6 per drink. So after how many drinks will the two girls have the same amount of money? So we're just going to solve this. 80 minus 4x equals 100 minus 6x. So this is just like any other equation with variables on both sides. I'm going to move my variables. So now I have 80 plus 2x equals 100. Now I've got my two-stepper. I bet you guys thought eventually I'd stop saying two-stepper. Nope, I say it every time. So now I have 2x equals 20. Divide by 2, I get x equals 10. So now I need to interpret that into the context of, this, of the story because remember I'm trying to determine the drinks they will, must purchase in order to have the same amount remaining on each card. So this 10 was drinks purchased, right? Because x, x, I named it. So if they both purchase 10 drinks, they will have the same amount on their cards, on their gift cards, excuse me. Okay, so if I do the math with that, if I put 10 in for x, well that makes sense. 4 times 10 is 40, so 80 minus 40, Chloe's going to have $40 left. 6 times 10 is 60, 100 minus 60, Alia's going to have $40 left, so that's perfect. Now let's move on to part C and then we're done. Alia claims that after purchasing 12 drinks for $6 each, she will still have enough money left on the $100 gift card to purchase four more drinks at the same price. Is she correct? All right, so let's think about this. How many total drinks is she hoping to purchase? 12 plus 4 is 16, right? So she wants to purchase 16 drinks. We know that her drinks each cost $6, and she has to hope that that's less than or equal to 100 because she only has $100 on her card. So when I, there's, there's no variable here. I don't have to do a variable because I have all the information. There's no missing information. So when I do 16 times 6, I get 96 is less than or equal to 100. Yes, it is, right? That is a true statement. So is she correct? Yes. 
Alia can purchase all 16 drinks, hopefully not at the same time. Okay, so there you have it. That's your study guide. Hopefully you have taken some time to look over this, fill this in, fix your work, follow along, what have you, so you are prepared for your quiz next time I see you. All right, thanks guys.